Well, first up, this is what we've been uh, talking about. That was the intro. That's the little graphics I have. I think it's, like a future. I just, it's not. I it just, just needed a name for the file. I, I wanted this to be like a skateboarding, like a skateboard deck look or like a thing. So it's Fruit Jam. No, we have some names in it. Uh, we have some naming ideas. But anyways, yeah, what is this lady? So, know. you know, because we we're, I'm finishing up the Metro RP2350, which I, I wanted to get into the store this week, but didn't, it didn't quite happen. So like next week, hopefully, I think should be possible. Um, and the RP2350, you know, has this HSTX capability that lets you basically plug in DVI output. It doesn't use a PIO, which means that you can use a PIO for something like USB host. And so um, the Metro has like some pins for USB host and it has this, you know, HSTX connector. And we, we've been making the joke that it's like, oh, well, if you have USB and you have DVI, like it's like a little computer. And I was like, oh, well, like, you know, I, I, I kind of like socked that away in my brain. And then I was reading um there's a hack chat over at hack a day with evan upton and i was like well you know evan's chatty maybe he'll he'll drop some cool gossip or something right so i'm reading it and he mentions this ichigo jam thing over and over again he's like yeah the dvi output has like it's like so we can do ichigo jam and i'm like what is this it was a little like 15 dollar computer that had composite out and it had usb in it used like the usb client as host you know you didn't you just like type directly on it. It was pre-programmed with like a basic-esque language. And I was like, oh, well, like we could do something like that with the RP2350, but get like full color, 320 by 240 on 640 by 480 graphics, or maybe like 640 by 480, but like, you know, 8-bit color and you could have USB host and like you could have USB keyboard and mouse. And then like, I kind of was like, before I know it, I was like, oh, let's design a computer. So if you want to go back or hide me, I can point out some things, or I don't know. Um, so you've got the RB2350 in the center, and then from the left to the right, there's an iSpy connector if you want external display, micro SD for storing files, and it has SDIO interface, USB-C for like the bootloading and debugging and stuff, DVI output, um, I2S audio DAC with stereo headphone and speaker. Um, you can select a couple buttons. Um, and then on the bottom right, there's a stomach QT, Two USB ports connected to a USB hub chip, which we'll, we'll see if that works. A big on-off switch, which I really like. It's like a really tall actuator. A uh, little JST three-pin connector, um, reset button, five NeoPixels, and then um, 16 megs of flash and eight megs of PS RAM. And then there's a socket header strip you can use for more GPIO. I mean, that the QFN80 version of the RP2050 has tons of pins, and this uses all the pins, but you still have like a lot. Um, available even after the DVI and the USB and SDIO and everything and iSpy. So it's um, it's kind of nice. It's like it's credit card shaped. Yeah. But um, I think this could run a lot of like, em like the RP2350, you can overclock it. It's a dual Cortex M33. It should be able to run emulation of like ZX Spectrum, maybe Apple IIe, maybe your Commodore 64 type things. Um, yeah. You know, it's not a TNC4, but it's like it's getting there. In there. You can you can over. I've seen people overclock it at three hundred megahertz. It's a, it's a fair formidable. It's a fair formidable chip. Okay, we'll see what it can do. And then even though we just released the uh, the round display, this is a little bit of a like top secret behind the scenes of uh, as we are working on it and more. Hey, Lady Ada, I see something cool. Yes, I only have eyes for you. Um, this is a classic uh, Halloween M four. Uh, based eyeball code that maybe folks remember from Halloween and for the monster mask. Uh, it's got the really high quality eyes with the DMA, the scan line uh, generation, um, all good stuff. But the code that we had for it was really um, hardware based. It was really dependent on using the exact hardware for the Halloween M4. And I wanted to like make it work on these new round displays we have, because like, duh, it's like a round eyeball. Um, the truth is that that's actually really, really hard to kind of pull away the hardware um, definition for these boards with all like the like the pins and the flash memory and the flash writing and like the internal storage, da, da, da. Um, so I spent the last like day and a half. And what I did is I kind of like tore it apart um, so that now in my, uh, and you can see I called this file try number four because that's how many tries it took me to do it. Final, exactly. final, underscore, final, yeah. oh, one. I, I now can do things like define the type of display and what pins it's on and the sensors and, you know, the SD card storage that I'm using. And so in this case, I'm using the GC 
uh, 9A01 instead of what was before the ST779. Um, everything else is pretty much the same, although I'm going to try to do a little bit more refactoring to kind of take out the platform agnostic stuff because another thing I want to do is get this working on the RP2350, which um, is about the same speed or faster than the M4 and also can be overclocked quite a bit. Um, and also a lot of people have asked for it on the ESP32, which I think can also do it. So, you know, how can I um, take everything but that like DMA push part, have that specific to the CMB51, and then for each platform, I'll just have to implement, um, you know, SPI DMA, but that usually isn't too bad. Anyways, uh, are you guys looking, looking good? Yeah, so this far. is really complicated and tough for those who know, you know. Um, yeah, so. refactory gold code is always Ooh, a joy. Okay. okay. And uh, here's just a more, uh, another preview of our game that we're calling The Great Search. This is Lady Ada. She's going through this uh, cyberpunk world and she's exploring it. She'll be looking for parts and more. Um, folks will be able to play this on Android and Android and Android. Android, Android, Android. Now, of course, the, it'll be Android and, of course, iOS and web and all that and Android. So um, check it out. We have some fun music and a lot of cool stuff going on with this. And uh, I'm really happy with it so far. That's top secret. <laughs>